Hey YouTube, so today I'm going to be showing you how I make pierogies. Now for the dough, you'll need a cup of water, about a, not a tablespoon, but just about, a salt, one egg, and four cups of flour. And for the filling, you need two pounds of potatoes, sliced and peeled and boiled. And right now they're just on the stove top boiling. And you'll need a tablespoon of salt. I put a tablespoon of garlic powder just to give it more flavor. Over a cup of shredded cheese and just a little bit of butter. And you're going to need a masher. So let's get started on these pierogies. So to make the filling of the pierogies, I'm going to use about 8 potatoes. I'm going to peel them. Take out all the imperfections and I have to put them in my pot and boil them. I'm going to chop them up into really small pieces. It doesn't really matter what they look like because it's all going to get smushed up anyways. get back to you once we have all the potatoes sliced and chopped. So I cut up all eight potatoes and I've rinsed them and I put some fresh water in the bowl. I'm going to put the lid on, turn the back burner on, let's say medium high. I'm going to let it boil, then I'm going to take the lid off and let it boil some more. And I think the whole process will take about 15 minutes, 20 minutes until they're tender and ready to mash up. So in my KitchenAid, we're gonna put four cups of flour and always have a little bit extra for when you're rolling it out. So. Eight. And I put eight of these because they're half cups. And then we're gonna add our salt, our one egg, and our water. Lock down the KitchenAid and put it on mix. So we'll get back when this becomes a ball of dough. I did end up putting an extra tablespoon of water. So you can see it's turned into a ball. Let me just lift this so you can see it better. See? Perfect, just the way I like it. So I'm going to just put a tea towel over top of it so it doesn't dry out until I'm ready to roll it out and make the pierogies. So it's been a while since the potatoes been boiling and I'm just gonna poke them with a knife and see if they're soft. Mm. Yeah, they're perfect. Nice and tender. So I'm gonna turn it off and drain it. If they fall apart like this because you boil them a little too much like I did, it's all right, don't worry about it. It's all getting mushed up. There we go. I'm gonna add a little bit of tablespoon of butter. Most recipes do not tell you to put butter in it, but I like making the filling a little more creamy. We're gonna mash it with a potato masher. Now you can use um, your KitchenAid to mash this up or um, a hand blender or whatever you like, but this is easier in my opinion than taking out the hand blender, and then after washing it and putting it back. The garlic powder is just what I do for the filling of the pierogies. Most traditional pierogies don't have this, so you can feel free to leave it out if you want. Put the salt in. I think that's well incorporated. Now I'm just gonna 
put this in the fridge for a little bit and let it cool down so it doesn't melt the cheese too much. So we'll be back. The potatoes have cooled down for about 10 minutes. And I'm just gonna just really mix some good, you know? Make sure everything gets incorporated. It's a little warm still, but that's all right. I just don't want it hot, hot and melt the cheese and have the cheese stick everywhere. And I'm gonna put our cup of cheddar cheese. Now I have a mixture of old and medium because it's just whatever I had in the fridge. You know, I'm not gonna run out just to get old cheddar cheese, which I prefer in this. So, there we go. Now let's mix it up really well. Look at that. And at this point is when you would add the bacon if you're putting bacon in here. I'm just going to put a little bit more salt. In my opinion, it needs a bit more salt. Let's mix that up again. We'll meet you at the table so we can start putting these produce together. All right, so we're gonna get started to rolling out the pierogies and filling them out. So what I have here is just a little bit of water with a pastry brush just to help um, seal them together, and you'll see in a minute. A bunch of old cookie sheets, well, pizza sheets, just so I can put the pierogies on and they're not touching, and I can freeze them. And just a little bit of extra flour use as much as you need or don't need to roll up the pierogies. And I'm just going to put a little bit of flour on the cookie sheet like so. I'm just going to take a piece out of my dough. I forgot something. My biscuit cutter. I'm going to use this to cut out the pierogies. You'll see in a minute. So I don't have it rolled out too thin because you don't want the dough too thin so when you're boiling it gets stuck or it just explodes. It's a nice thickness for me. A little bit more. There we go. I'm just going to put a little bit of our potato mixture. There we go in the center. Just a little bit at a time. It's all you need. And I'm gonna put water, just like that, see, just around, to help bind it. I'm gonna flip it over. I'm holding the, the filling in so it stays in place. And with my thumbs, I'm just gonna flatten out the part that I put the water on. See, and it has like a nice little progy shape. And with my biscuit cutter, it out and I'm gonna just shape it again with my fingers and there you go perfect pierogi I like putting sometimes a little extra flour around it I'm gonna put it on my cookie sheet and I'm just gonna do a few for you just so you can see what it looks like finish making all the pierogies and I'll show you what I do next because you probably don't want to watch any more of this it's gonna be a bit time-consuming I finally finished making my pierogies and I got roughly 47 out of this but as you can see I made way too much potato I'm just gonna put the potato 
in a Tupperware. And tomorrow morning, or maybe even on Sunday, I'll make some more and finish it up. And now what we're going to do is, we're going to put the pierogies in the, oh, stuff here. We're going to put the pierogies in the freezer. Just up there. My freezer is packed with stuff. Completely packed. I'm sure yours is too at home. And all it really needs is a good hour. Mm. Sorry about the camera movement, everyone. Here. And in an hour, they'll be frozen and we can put them in a bag. The pierogies have been in the freezer for just about an hour and they're hard. They're ready to be stored. So I have a bag with some that I made for my last batch. And all you have to do is take them off the cookie sheet in the bag. Now I have a whole bag of pierogies that I just keep in the freezer for dinner. In my next video, I'll show you how I cook my homemade pierogies and make them delicious. Until next time, thank you for watching.